Welcome to this Film Fest DC conversation with Lajaro Ramos, director and writer of Executive Order, and lead actress Thais Aroju, who plays Capitu in the film. We're very excited to be meeting these two icons of their generation. My name is Linda Blackaby. I'm the senior program for the festival and curator of the Justice Matters section in which Executive Order is competing. We thank Cross Currents Foundation for their support for this. I'm right now based in what's known as San Francisco and acknowledge this location on the unceded territories of the Ramatush Ohlone, who along with hundreds of other native tribes have resided in California for thousands of years. Many Ohlone continue to call the Bay Area home. So I'll do a little introduction to our honored guests. We're, we're, so, we're so happy to see them. Lazaro Hamish is one of his country's most decorated actors. He's been in over 38 movies and received more than 60 awards for his theater and film work. He's a director, writer, and producer, and a prominent artist, personality, and activist. His 217 memoir, In My Skin, became a national bestseller three weeks after it launched in Brazil. He started his acting career at the flock of Oladum Theater Group in Salvador and is became well known for his portrayal of Joao Francisco dos Santos in the 20, 2002 film, Madame Sata by Karima News. After all that executive order is his directorial debut. Thais Sarajou must be one of the busiest and most beloved of Brazilian actresses. Her first prominent role was Chica da Silva in the long running Brazilian telenovela series by the same name in which she was in 230 or 231 episodes and her career has continued to expand today. She's also an influential activist in the service of various social causes. We're so honored and pleased. Our interview today will be Cornelia Smore, the co-director of California Newsreel. It's a 53 year old distribution and production company. He's been a staff member there since 1981. He founded the African Film Distribution Initiative the, li the Library of African Cinema and currently heads California Newsreel's African American Perspectives Collection, focused on films about Black American life and history. Cornelius has served as a judge and presenter at film festivals in North America, Africa, and Brazil. He's also an independent film curator specializing in films from and about the Black world and curates regularly for San Francisco's Museum of the African Diaspora. And also we have with us the wonderful Brazilian American filmmaker, Miguel Silveira, who will be interpreting as needed. So Cornelius, I, it, over to you. Thank you very much, Linda, for the introduction. And um, it's a great honor and a personal thrill to speak with Lázaro Ramos and uh, Thais Araujo uh, about your very important, daring and provocative film executive order especially in these times that we're in. Um, thank you. And boa tarde. Boa tarde. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's a great honor to, to talk to you and to be here in this film festival. Our right. pleasure being with you. Thank, thank you. you. So just in give people some context, um, people of African descent are 54% of the population of Brazil. And that's 160 million people. And many people in the United States do not know this. Um, and yet, admitting that, um, that there is racism in Brazil seems to be denied as something that happens in the United States. Uh, and so to ask the shift to, to talk about this project, um, Lasso, how did you find this story and choose this as your first film to be to, to direct and why did you think it was important to do oh wow great question <laughs> well it, it was a play i directed this play in mm -hmm. on 2011 and i started to ask many directors friend of mine to direct this history because i i, I noticed that this is a kind of a different way how to talk about racism and identity. Mm -hmm. But uh, all my friends 
said me no. <laughs> then I, I decided to listen Zosim Bubu, you know him. <laughs> He's an incredible black director from Brazil, incredible actor and creates a huge film festival here in Rio de Janeiro. He told me once, he, he touched me on my arms, look at my eyes and, and said, Lazaro, this is a strong thing. This is like a gun, use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he shows me the camera. And you know, we are activists and artists. And this story, I think it's really important because uh, the story shows the racism, but uh, this story talks uh, with our feelings also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is something important to me because sometimes we think just with our mind about this and we need to talk with, uh, with our heart also. It, was, is this a, a way of um, representing a response to, well, resistance and racist resistance to the advancement of Black people and to the issue of police violence and affirmative action and even the discussion about um, reparations for slavery? Because one of the things that stood out for me in the film is that um, when the issue came up about reparations that it allowed people who had resentment, black, white people uh, re against black people to, to react and to say things that they, in the film, that they probably would never say publicly or, or would be reluctant to and maybe ashamed or to say publicly. So that's one of the things that stood out to me in this film. So is, is this kind of a to a response to push back against that resistance? Wow. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I wanted to, to do a movie talking about subjects that we didn't want to happen. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of alert. The, the, mm -hmm. My first intention is talk about one alert. Unfortunately, many things uh, that we, sh we shot in um, 2019 and we wrote on 2014 happens. Mm -hmm. That's the, the thing. And now we, we, we know we, we have new fights, mm -hmm. reparation against the racism, we keep, we keep fighting and that's it. But this movie has one, one intention. Uh, they want to invite other people to fight with us. Mm -hmm. You know, here in our country, sometimes there are many people who don't want to think about it. So it doesn't matter this subject, but this movie, it's an invitation for mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. you know? So given that the, the, this was a play and there were two, only, only two characters in the play, Yes, or something exactly. like that. Just so, because it's the name of the play is Namibia Now, no, written no. by Audrey Anunciação. Who is also in the film. I know yeah, he plays Ivan. <laughs> he plays so Ivan. So that, that must be a challenge for you to expand the film, expand the story into a film with many more characters, many more um, locations, and, and also in the casting question. And that was a question I was gonna um, pose to uh, Thais for you to be in a, a film like this where it offered you a role where I'm gonna assume that there, there are not a, maybe a lot of opportunities in, in films for black actresses or roles where you could play a doctor. And so I'd like you to talk about what that was like for you. I know we, people should know that you're professional colleagues and, and also life partners. So um, just so people know that, but I, I wanted to ask you, what, what was it like for you to, to be in this role and have this opportunity in this role? 
Mm. I saw all the, I, I was with him during all the process. Uh -huh. At the first day, the, re, the first day of rehearsal of the play, till the day that he decided to make the play a film and all the process, how can we change or how can you make a play become, becomes a film? We need to put more character. We need to think about it. We need, and, and I think that he was thinking about many kinds of black people that we have here in Brazil. Mm. So he had the, the, <laughs> the challenge. The challenge. The challenge. Yeah. The challenge. Yeah. To, to, to fulfill the, the story with many kinds of people, more, even more of Black people, because we are thinking about Black people. Mm. And he decided, they, they decided to put a woman because they just have two guys and mm -hmm. it's important to be to have a woman there in this story and what what kind of woman because we just we have just two characters and they are the same of the play they have the their specific characters in specific yeah. <laughs> identity. There's, I, I told you that my English disappeared today. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think I'm too tired. And and they they, they they these two characters they had their identity. It was ready because it's exactly from the play, and they decided to put a woman there. And what kind of woman? So let's think. Let's think about uh, a doctor, but a person that doesn't want to think about the issue. Mm. She's just worried about her career and mm. her life, and they don't, she, she doesn't want to think about it much about racism in Brazil. So what happened is one thing that I think that's happening for every black person in the world. You can do the, you can choose not to think about it, but most life will call you to think about it because you will ever and ever be a black person and things happening to black people. And happens for every black people. So what happened with this 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 this, this character with, with this Katu is even if she doesn't want to think about it, things happen. And she needed to act and to think. And for me it was really a really good opportunity to have this role. Uh, and to to do this kind of person because we have many 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 people that thinks like this and mm. and that could help us with the issue and and for us for every black black person is really important that black people care about the the races and can recognize that we are a racist, a racist country, and that we need everybody together to change the world, to change the country. So for me, it was a pleasure to have this role and, and to, 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 do, to do it, because mm -hmm. it's an action, it's do, not <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you for that, because I, the other thing about the different characters, I noticed that there were, people who are, you know, are creators in their own right. There's, um, um, there's you, there's Alfred Enoch, who people here 
know as a TV actor and who speaks in an American English accent with how to how to get away with murder and so so Georgie yeah. um and um MSC MC Day MC Day who was a MC Day yeah who was a hip hop artist yeah and who and and the veteran actor Hilton Cobra yeah and sure. and also Diva uh Guimarães and so all, across generations across kind of different ways of expressing and um and I, I, one of the more moving scenes was with you Thais and uh and um Diva Jumarais being a, an elder to telling your character about how she endured and what giving her advice about how to continue to live that was very very moving for me and I, I'm curious mm -hmm. what that was like for you to interact with her because maybe you also want to tell us who she is um, at, you know her role in Brazilian society it's for me it's or for her well I want to know how, how <laughs> you interacted with her in that scene but yes. I also wanted to have the audience understand who she is. Okay. I think that is for okay. you because you have a, a really beautiful story with her. Oh yeah, you know, in this movie we have seven seven actors. Mm -hmm. Every actor in the Afro bunker are actors from theater here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. There are something really important to talk about this movie is that is the the movie in our whole history mm -hmm. with more black people. Uh, in front and behind the cameras. Uh -huh. Our crew, our team are black also. And each person was chosen by this reason. Mm -hmm. We want to show the, the diversity in the black people, age diversity, a good character for these amazing actors as Thais, and invited uh, Alfred who is half Brazilian, half England, mm -hmm. Seu Jorge Emicida, who is an incredible artist and activist today here in Brazil. And Mr. Diva, Dona Diva Guimarães, uh -huh. uh, is an actress. <laughs> I met her when I premiered my book, in My Skin, mm -hmm. in a literary, literature fest festival. Literature festival? Yeah, that's it. Literary. Literary festival, yeah. I, I was talking about racism in my uh, speech mm -hmm. and she uh, get the microphone and talk about her history, about racism, racism in all her life. And she speaks for 13 minutes and an audience with 2,000 people stops and listen her. This video today in Brazil has 30 million, 30 million millions of views hmm. because it was a really impressive moment. And she told, I never talked about racism in all my life. Today, I feel secure to talk about it. And I start to talk with her every month. He's a, a friend of friend, mine. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. And he's a person really special. And she, she is a person really special. And she's a kind of symbol for us mm -hmm. in Brazil now. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it, feel like, it felt like there was an um, homage to her as someone who had, you know, endured and and could guide the way and, and show that black people have been there in Brazil and in the, in this, in the Americas for, for centuries and she's representing these ancestors, even though she's still here, very much here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was very taken by this, um, the term, this odd terminology, it was translated in, into English that 
highly melanized people. <laughs> <laughs> so is this like, you know, first we, we go from black to Af Afro, a descendant Afro <laughs> to highly melanized. Tell, talk about that. Where did, you, where did that come from? Oh, the, 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 this expression comes from the play. Okay. Alvin Luciaso is, is a really creative uh, writer mm -hmm. and we decide to think how will be the future with our cause. And he told me one day, well, I think we, in the future, we, we, our name yeah. is not more Black, it's not more African, yes. Brazilian. And I will invite that some new expression. Uh -huh. And for me, this is something funny because our, our history is exactly that. Mm -hmm. Every period, we change our classification, our name. And that's a, a kind of that dilemma. Yes. D mm -hmm. Dilemma? Dile dilemma. Mm -hmm. Dilemma in our, our fight, our activism. And that, that is something special in this movie. There are many, many things talking about a, a, a possibility of future. Many books, many stuffs on the scenario. And this expression represents very well the, the, uh, our intention, mm -hmm. our discussion. Yeah, I thought it was very humorous that that, yeah. that term would be used. Um, I guess the other thing, as an, uh, in the United States, I don't know if you know that there is more, more talk than ever about reparations and even you know discussions um, um, gatherings to talk about that, to discuss that in Congress, in US Congress. But I, I saw your film as kind of a warning. It's like, well, if, if Black people protest too much, it's like, well, you know, well, if you, if you, 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 rather than give you reparations, it'll be cheaper for us just to send you back <laughs> to, to Africa. And, and I hadn't thought that, that that might be the response to people in power. And so I, I saw your film as like, oh, we need to be, be conscious that that might be coming our way. So I thank you for that. Um, and, and, and you know, Cornelius, we have many examples of this in the history of the world. Many laws are made talking about good things, but in fact, they have a kind of, of danger and the intention is other. I think it's, this is something important to think. Yes, thank you very much for that. <laughs> uh, so the film has not shown yet in Brazil and what do you anticipate will be the reaction? Do you think there will be significantly different reactions from white viewers than Af from Afro-Brazilians? That's one part. And do you, are you concerned that it could affect your career, the, the, the reaction? Doesn't matter for me, if a fact. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Who has Boston? No, but you know, <laughs> I need to talk. We need to do something. We need to yeah. do our things. No, but there is one thing. Uh, the, United, the United States received the movie. We, we were in four festivals there, right? Five, four, five think, or yeah. four. And was the first, first country that could see the movie. Mm. So of, of course the first reactions that we had. And you were, we were so surprised by the reaction of the United States because we had, we had several, several critic, critics several amazing critics. So I'm worried about how Brazil will receive because I just, we just had wonderful critics <laughs> from the United States. So we, we, we were, uh, every time I'm talking to him, let's, how Brazil will, how will Brazil receive the film? United, in the United States, it, did really, really, really well, more than well, because you couldn't imagine what happened there. Mm. But how will Brazil receive the film? I really don't know. <laughs> Was this a strategy? He says that he doesn't care. 
I care. No, yeah. I, I, I don't care about the political consequences. Oh, okay. I don't care about the political consequences, okay. not about the reaction of the regular audience. Because I think the regular audience uh, will be great because this movie has one strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a good entertainment also. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our strategy is to put humor in the first part of the movie, mm -hmm. change for thriller, and in the end, talk, talks about political things and drama. Because we want, we think we, the, the audience needs to, to need to be, to, to be touched, be touched, touched. be touched, touched. laugh, cry. Mm -hmm. That's our politics with mm -hmm. this movie to entertain. Uh, I really believe in the power of the, the humor and the, how I can say lágrimas? Tears, tears, crying, or whatever. Crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this is something who we feel in our skin, in our soul. That's that's what I believe, and that's why I think it will be good. But maybe some political debates will be strong, but it's important. We need it's, to talk about the subject. It's nowadays. valuable. Yeah. That's it. Even more nowadays, that, 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 that what we are living here in Brazil is important to, to think about the country, to think about the, the attitudes, to think about the government's attitudes, to think about the civil attitudes, to think yeah. about civil rights. It's really important to think about these issues. Um, so we can. So <laughs> we are anxious. We are a little bit anxious to show here in Brazil. You, you are con concerned. Okay, you you concerned, but you're going to move forward anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I question: Was this a strategy to to have it outside of Brazil first, and then get very good uh, uh, reviews, get a good support, and to say, oh. You know, outside of the country, this is this has also been this a, a way of protection and support. No, no in fact, no. no we it. change our plans because okay. our first plan was to show on South by Southwest yeah. on April 2020, March, March, March 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, last no, year. Last year. year. Last year on March, and here in Brazil we. Our, our desire uh, was to show on April, one month later, but the corona changed our plan. That's it. In the, in the first moment was really sad because, you know, we, we, yeah. we want to show here, yeah. but that, that's the life. I have a couple more questions um, for you. At the end of the film, it looks like an uh, actual, actual demonstration of resistance. And how did you organize that? I noticed that last of all, you were in it. You were in the crowd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but all Black people are very, very strong and fierce. Tell, tell, tell us how you organized that. Well, you know, I, I shot three ends of this movie. In fact, <laughs> I had doubt. I, I never know how to finish this movie. But I decided to put this move, this this exactly end because uh, sometimes when I saw some projects about black black history, mm -hmm. I feel sad and weak and weak, and I wanted to to show for my audience that they can be strong. That's why. This is a really specific end because we cried, but I want the people feel strong to change the world and walk together. This is my message. And the other end, I had, I have a really sad end, really sad, <laughs> really sad, and then put in the trash. And the other end, it's too much poetry. Poetry? It's my poetry. Poetic. Yeah. Poetic, poetic, poetic. And I think this is this is a good end to to 
to to show for my audience that it's possible to change bad situations. And there is one thing that is was really beautiful to say, because uh, you asked how he organized that the other people, and he just invited friends and said, invite a friend, invite a friend, invite a friend. And when you got there, we had five, five, 500, 500. people, wow. just friends of friends of friends of friends wow. that they just like it to be there with us and help us with the story. You know, in this, this specific scene, we, we had the most incredible uh, writer from Brazil, Conceição Evaristo. Because of she, she, today, I think Conceição is 78 years old, and she came and she talks to me, well, my son, I need to walk with you and with those people now. I cried a lot. I read this specific scene crying all the time. I, I, it, it was impossible to me see on the screen what's happened because I'm crying all the time. Our son was there. Our son was there. Yeah. Just That's friends the... and friends of friends. Just it's about love, you know, Carlos. Oh, yeah. It's about it's very, love. Very empowering. And the, 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 the power of love. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was great. And Conceição is in it. She's she's in there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, look for her. I'll look and I'll look again. Yeah, <laughs> everybody who's in the crowd. And I love this quote at the end of the film. In 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 a culture of death, living is, living is civil disobedience. So, what's your comment about that? Is that something from the play, or is it from <laughs> someone else, or you know, we. This is, this is important. We learn every day about our subjects with many people. This, this specific line is from a very young activist and influencer. His name is Murilo Araújo. Today, he is 25 years old. Yes. And he's a special guy, very young and very smart. And I was uh, looking for one life with him. And he talks this line, this line. Mm. And I said, wow, this is really special. This is strong. We have new voices talking mm. about this subject. It's a kind of, of homenage. Well, um, homenage. <laughs> Homage, yeah. homage from this, yeah. uh, this new generation of activists. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a great way to, to end. Um, I could talk to you all day. I know you're, you're, you're got, you all, you have just been working on the set. So um, I'll we'll let you go and thank you so much for, for lending your time for this, for discussing about your film. We, I think everybody who will see it. I encourage them to go see it many times. Also, um, and hopefully that it will be available in the United States as, at some point more widely, as well as your soundtrack for the movie, which uh -huh. is amazing. <laughs> Elza Soares, Rincon Sapiencia, Lineker, Baco Shoot Blues, the name of the artists. Many, many of them are from hip hop. And Elza Soares is our god. She is our diva. She's our diva. diva. Like, <laughs> for me, it's like God. She's like yeah, God for, for us. For me, she's not like she's God. She's God, God. yeah. <laughs> and okay. she's, she's really special, amazing. And we love Elsa. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Lázaro Ramos and uh, Thais Araujo. Thank you so much for your time and for your wonderful film executive order and for your work that you're doing all the time. Thank, Thank you, so you Cornelius. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Wonderful. <laughs>